Let's talk about Worldwide Developer Conference. So uh, unfortunately, you and I were in the thick of the 6.5 Summit when this was going on. So I had to watch back and sort of consume this in bits. But of course, my social feeds were lit up with WWDC content. Um, uh, you know, let's just quickly touch on what was what happened, right? So what did happen and then maybe what didn't happen. What did happen was, as everyone expected, we got a new op operating system. We got the new M2 chip. Uh, what some people I think expected that did happen too is the MacBook Air got updated. Um, there were some pretty cool features. Uh, there was a new watch OS. I, I don't, you know, I'm not a watch wearer, Pat, so I'll let you talk about if that matters. Um, you know, there were some cool features. Some of the, I, I really thought the tech stuff was cool about being able to unsend messages. You know, that way if you're super hot and heated, you can, you know, Pat sends me a message, Dan, you were completely wrong, you idiot. And then five minutes later, you're like, oh, he hasn't read that yet. I'm gonna unsend that before he sees that. I thought, you know, I thought that was clever more because, you know, I, more because all that stuff's gonna be tracked and logged because that's internal. So it's not a discovery or legal thing. I think some people are trying to make that into, you will be able to get that data back in discovery, I'm pretty sure. The the reason that's important is how many times have you like sent the message to the wrong person? You're like, oh crap, you know? <laughs> you know? only send you can only delete it or edit it for 15 minutes oh yeah but i mean that's a good start because a lot of the time you send it and immediately you're like oh i didn't mean to send it to that person you know what i mean like right yeah. away but yeah you're right it's not perfect but it's better it's kind of like the edit button on twitter it'd be good if we could edit like for five minutes even if you wouldn't be able to permanently edit because i constantly tag things and misspell things and i'm like crap gotta delete it do it again anyways this yeah. is about apple not about twitter those are the things that sort of caught my attention. Um, you know, Pat, the one thing that didn't happen though, again, was there was some thought that the augmented reality next wave was coming at this developer conference. And yet again, nothing. There is nothing happening there. Apple is, the metaverse is, you know, it's weird because this is something you would have absolutely expected Apple to be on top of. And for the longest time, you know, I remember the Scobalizer putting out tweets about the clear iPhone that was going to be futuristic and you were going to be minting NFTs that were going to be popping out of the sky off of your new iPhone. And we're literally like five generations. And I think this is a Tim Cook sy symptom. Tim Cook is a, he's an implementer. He is a profit extractor. He is going to suck every dollar out of every resale. He's going to be as iterative as possible from generation to generation. Um, and he's going to, you know, especially when it comes to the iPhones and the advancement in that particular category. I'll give him one prop, though, Pat. And this goes back to the ARM conversation, not server and data center, which we were talking more about on that last segment. But that M2 chip, what I'm reading and what I'm looking at is it looks compelling. I'm, you know, you and I were both very skeptical during M1. We were um, overtly critical. And by the way, early M1 stunk. It was terrible. Um, it was incompatible. It was incompatible with most of the things that people use, and that's a problem. Um, we're now at a year and a half. I'm trying to think about the exact date about since that debut of the M1, um, and it looks like what's coming down the line here with the M2 is is compelling, Pat. And um, I don't know if you've looked at it. I don't know if you've read about it, but I am, you know, at a might have a slightly different viewpoint on it. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, at a, they are they're figuring it out. You know, you've got high resolution, you got an eight core CPU, a 10 core GPU, two terabytes of SSD, you got up to 24 gigabytes of memory, you got high color, 1080p cameras, you know, you've got 8K video playback on these things, and it's 1200 bucks. Now, you know, if you're trying to buy a cheap PC for the household, three or $400 off of a pile at Walmart, that's not gonna be your thing. But if you're looking for a pretty high quality $1,200 PC, um, that's great. And the last thing I'm going to leave on this is there's more indication here about the ecosystem becoming connected. iPad, iPhone, Mac, on the ARM instruction set, we're going to get to a point where your mobile device and your and your PC, sorry, your mobile device and your Mac <laughs> are going to become increasingly compatible in terms of the, simu uh, you know, the experience, the ability to simulate the apps from device to device and create more continuity. I think that's going to be a very strong and sticky thing for Apple. And of course, they love Sticky because they are the most uh, anti-competitive company I've ever seen in my life. There we go. I think that's a great place to end. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rattle off uh, my thoughts real quick. So a lot of the uh, changes inside of iOS basically remind me of Android, right? I use both phones. I use a mini for iMessage with my family, and then I use 
um, this S22 Ultra uh, from from Samsung to do do my real work and my real play. And essentially, they lifted a lot of the personalization uh, uh, things from from uh, Android. But hey, if you're an iPhone user, I think you're going to uh, enjoy them. Company took a, a different stab at the smart home, which uh, Apple has been a a category category failure uh, in in this market with uh, with their stuff. They added Matter support, which I think is good. They had, they didn't add. Gosh, when's the last time you've seen a smart home device completely <laughs> miss the wave of smart speakers uh, out there? CarPlay, CarPlay is going full dash. Uh, you probably saw. Um, the mock-ups, by the way, didn't cite a single car maker uh, at all. So um, nobody's nobody's going to use it, huh? Well, I thought about, hey, is this just timing because it's WWDC? But when does Apple come out with something brand new like this without having partners, right? So, you know, it's funny. Uh, there's been a lot of people who have wondered, hey, w w what's Apple's endgame on this? Is it, a, is it a smart car or is it a smart dashboard that they can license out for the experience? I think they're hedging their bets. I think they're still working on a on a full uh, smart car here, but in the end, they want Apple to be the experience uh, for the self driving car because that environment is going to be our future living room, our future office, and in in some uh, way, shape, or form, uh, our future uh, bedroom. Uh, on watch, the big thing for me was the medication uh, app. Right, it tracks what you take. You can scan your meds in. Uh, gives you uh, drug to drug uh, negative interactions, uh, what you shouldn't be taking with uh, with uh, with alcohol. Um, uh, by the way, this stuff scares the crap out of me for a potential uh, uh, breach, um, and not because you know necessarily. I think of even you know uh, you know my situation where you know I'm, I'm taking all of these. Um, um uh drugs no i'm just kidding <laughs> just a few sorry and they're yeah, mostly just, legal it, no but it, it just it seems uh it, it seems it, it seems pretty uh uh i don't know pretty pretty ridiculous to me but we'll see uh, they have a secure platform but is it secure enough of somebody who is 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 motivated let's talk m2 daniel gosh 25 percent bigger and they said it gives 18% performance improvement on multi-core. So first of all, uh, I'll take that as no single core improvement. Uh, so IPC stayed the same. Well, what the heck did they do to this thing? Because they added a bunch of stuff. They added uh, up to 24 gigs of memory. Um, you know, it's an eight core, four, four. So no single core improvement and that means no improvement in performance on things that are single core and most things are are single core and daniel does it pass your smell test that 25 percent bigger uh um 20 25 percent more transistors and 18 percent higher performance that sounds like a step back to me and then when i when i uh when i compare it to what happened before um it you know 50 percent improvement 60 percent uh, improvement so i don't know i'm disappointed my guess is that this was initially targeted at tsmc's fake three nanometer uh process or n3 and n3 just didn't make it so they had to backport to a second generation fake five nanometer uh apart new new macbook air they fixed a lot of the things they broke uh, prior. They added Mag MagSafe uh, in, 25% brighter, 1080p camera, fanless, fast charge, nothing that is over and above uh, wind any of the Windows premium devices from Dell, uh, HP, uh, or L Lenovo, or, or Service. New MacBook Pro added M2, but who cares about M2? I mean, M2 versus M1 is is an absolute uh, yawner, uh, in in my opinion. That's it. That's it. That's WWDC for me. So we're uh, we're we're at odds a little bit on that one. I uh, 
you know, I'm a power user of the premium devices, but I do use an M1. I do find it to be a pretty good experience. I do think it provides, again, I like the, uni I like the universal opportunity to create seamless experiences from mobile to, to desktop. That is something I, the Windows ecosystem needs to improve. Oh yeah, I, I, man, I wish I had that. But, you know what I'm saying? That's what I feel yeah. that Apple's going towards. Having said that, you're absolutely right on some of the specs, good call outs. And like I said, this show is always better when we're not 100% in agreement on every single problem.